What's going on everybody? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to close more deals using some of the most powerful negotiation tips I've learned over my sales career. Now, if you're excited for this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more videos like this. And let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so we are going to be covering a masterclass in negotiations. I'm gonna give you some of the best tips and strategies to negotiate from the very beginning all the way to closing the deal. Typically, when you're going for the close, there's gonna be parts where you're negotiating and you're trying trying to get the best deal. The customer's trying to get the best deal. You're, and somehow you guys have to both come to an agreement and somehow meet in the middle, right? But actually you're not really meeting in the middle because the strategies I'm gonna show you today, you're actually going to be in a very advantageous position while making the other person feel like you guys are meeting in the middle. And I'll explain to you exactly what that means. First step when it comes to negotiations is that anchoring is very important. So it's all about pricing, right? Now, if you are selling a product and service, a lot of times the customer is gonna say like, you know, what's your price? Before you even wanna get to that, you always wanna ask what's your budget? right? Because based on the person's budget, you can price accordingly. And in B2B sales, where all the prices are made up anyways, you are typically trying to charge higher so that your company and yourself earn more commissions. That's typically how it goes, right? You're not going to give, you know, everyone the best discount right off the bat. Let's say if you're willing to sell a product for $10,000 and the customer says, yeah, my budget is $15,000. Well, you can just say, hey, you know, we actually charge $15,000. It fits your budget. And then you make $5,000 more dollars. So that's why it's important to ask for the budget first to see if they will give it up. Now, in other cases, the customer is a little more savvy when it comes to dealing with B2B salespeople. And they're like, nah, we're not going to give you your budget. And if you don't give us your price, then it's okay. We're going to go with another provider. So in those situations, after you ask for the budget, they don't want to give it. The next step is to give them a price that is anchored typically higher. Every industry is a little different. Sometimes you want to increase your price by 30%, 50%, 200%. I mean, I've dealt with people where I'm buying a service and they literally double their price. And then I negotiated them down like 50% because I knew the price they gave me wasn't fair, but it was a way for them to anchor me high, right? And that's just how it goes. Let's say you're okay with getting $10,000 to sell your product or service. And you might say like, yeah, so our services are typically $15,000 for what you're looking for. How does that sound to you? And the person's gonna be like, hmm, that's a little higher than I thought. You know, is there a reason for why it's that price? And you say, yeah, you know, that's typically what we start out with. Um, and that's what most of our customers go with, right? And then they'll typically say like, okay, is there any chance I can get a discount? So here's where the negotiation happens. The customer is like, that price is too high. I'm a little uncomfortable with it, but they want some kind of discount. And so what you do is that you do give them these discounts because you're already in your head, you know, you're willing to accept 10,000, you charge them 15,000, so you are you can go 5,000 lower if you really wanted to, right? But here's a catch. Every time you lower your price, you should ask for something in return. So let's say you want the customer to close on a certain date. You're like, okay, you know, let me talk it over with my boss and get back to you on what we can do to lower the price. And then you talk to your boss, right? And then you go back to the customer and you're like, okay, talk to my boss. And he said that we can lower the price to $13,000 if you sign by this day. If you sign after this day, it has to go back to 15 because it's only good if you do that thing. And the customer is going to think like, okay, well, I'm going to save $2,000. If I just sign this thing, I was going to do it anyway. So I'm just going to sign it on that day. So you win because you close the deal, you secured it. There's no iffy washy things that you rule out the competition and the person just gets the deal done. And sometimes that's worth that discount. Other cases, the customer might be like, okay, that sounds good to me, but I want $12,000. You know, I don't want to pay 13,000. I want to pay $12,000. And you're like, okay, well, do you mind if I go ahead and talk about it with my manager to see what else we can do? And they're going to be like, sure, if you can get me the discount. So you go back to your manager and you say like, okay, well, he'll sign it, but he wants more. So what do we do? And then you'll be like, all right, well, what if we get him to sign a yearly contract? And instead of monthly, we go yearly and we'll give him a thousand dollars off. So you go back to the person and you're like, okay, talk to my manager. We can do 12,000 under two conditions. Number one, you sign it on this day. Number two, you have signed a yearly contract and you don't do it month by month. How does that sound to you? If the person know they're going to use your services anyways for the year, they might be like, well, I save a thousand dollars, so I'm going to do it. It's the same as if you use Spotify, right? You can pay monthly, which is a certain price, or you could pay yearly and you would save, you know, X amount of dollars. And you're like, well, I use Spotify every day anyway, so I might as well just pay yearly and save like 20% or whatever it is. Same exact psychology, right? And so every time you negotiate, every time somebody tries to lower your price, ask for something in return to make the deal go faster, get better terms, maybe potentially make more money in the long term by securing them longer term. There's always ways to spin it depending what your product and service is, but 
that's how it goes, right? You could also say like, hey, we'll give you a discount on that if you buy this extra thing too. And we'll also give you a discount on the thing number two. So there's different ways to spin it, but just remember, always ask for something for return if the customer is asking for a discount. Let's reverse it a little bit. Let's say that you are buying a product and service and you want the best price. Well, typically the best way to do it, especially if you're buying something that's a commodity, like services that many people can do, car, for example. I literally did this just the other month, purchasing some business services for my company. And so basically I was paying for this service, which cost quite Quite a bit of money, right? It's quite a bit of money. Basically, what I did was uh, I went to one person, one agency, and I said, Hey, you know, I'm trying to do this thing, and we're looking for an agency to handle this side of the business. Can you guys do it? They're like, Absolutely. And I said, Okay, give me a quote. So they gave me a quote. Let's just arbitrary, let's just call it $20,000, right? So they gave me $20,000, and then I'm like, Okay, so it costs $20,000 to do this thing. Cool. Let me get back to you. So I go to another agency, basically go through the same conversation and be like, This is what I'm trying to do. You know, what's the price? They'll be like, Oh, you know, we are charging $15,000, right? And this is arbitrary. And then I'm like, Okay, cool. So I go to another agency, like a third one, and I'm like, Hey, what's your price? And they'll be like, Oh, this is $25,000. I'm like, Hmm, that's kind of weird. Uh, this other agency down the street, they're charging 15 and you're charging 25. What's the difference? And then they're going to be like, it's literally the same thing. So let's just lower our price to match them. And then they'll match that 15, right? You know, basically every agency I go to at that point, they're going to keep matching the 15 because they want the business for a commodity service. Then I go back to the person who offered me 15 and I say, hey, you know, I talked to these other guys. They're really reputable. You know, they basically do the exact same thing you do, but I really like you guys. Is there anything you can do on price? Is it possible to lower it? And then we can secure the deal. They're going to be like all the other people basically do the same thing we do, but we really like Patrick and we could just secure the deal. So let's just secure the deal and like lower our price a little bit more, right? And so that is pretty much how I lowered my price price in terms of like getting business services. And that's also how you figure out what is the market price, right? Because like if you go to enough agencies, there's always going to be one that's trying to be cheaper and they're going to go low, right? And even sometimes you can even get them even lower. But then if you like another agency that's more reputable, well, you can just say, take the price from the first agency and go to the reputable one and be like, yo, this guy's charging this, doing the same thing you're doing. Obviously you have a brand, but can you lower your price? And a lot of times they would just lower the price because they want to work with you and they want the business. And if they think you're a long-term customer, meaning they do this first job and and it's good and then they can do more jobs with you in the future then uh, they will probably lower their price and that's pretty much one of the easiest strategies that you can apply anywhere but this typically only works for commodity products and services that you can get from another person right so if it's like web development agency well there's a million shops that do the same thing so that's something you can like go to every shop and like get them to bid against each other but if somebody sells something like very unique and only they can do it the strategy doesn't work because you can't go to the shop down the street because they don't do the same thing but that's typically what i would do also in, in the reverse end you can keep asking for discounts Counts, but then give up something in return, right? So like I could say like, hey, you know, your thing costs $15,000, but I want to pay, you know, $13,000. Is it possible to lower the get a discount? They might say, mm, I don't think so. And you say, okay, well, what if I sign the contract by this day? Does that lower the price? Uh, I don't know, Patrick, uh, let me talk it over my boss and then maybe they'll lower the price. And then maybe you'll say, oh, you know, actually, how about we lower it even more? But what I'll do for you is I will sign it on this day, guarantee I will do a yearly contract. So instead of paying month by month, I'm gonna pay for the whole year upfront. Basically you give up stuff, right? So like the reverse scenario that we talked about in the beginning, what happens is that by giving up these things that are technically free for you, you're lowering the price. So you signing one week earlier or one month earlier, doesn't cost you any money, but it saves you like a few thousand dollars in that hypothetical situation, right? So think about like all the things that you can give for free to negotiate and give it to the seller to lower your price because that works really well. And a lot of times when a business or salesperson really wants that deal to close by the end of the month, they are willing to give you that discount for you to secure the deal so that they can hit their quota. So uh, it's human psychology really, but yeah, that's uh, some big tips when it comes to negotiating. So in negotiations, there are also situations where things might get a little heated where you might have a certain perspective on what the price should be and the customer has a certain perspective and it's just not really gelling, right? And they're not like communicating that well. They're not like trying to cooperate and it's like very hard on both sides. So a tip I have for you there is that you want to use your tonality to build rapport with that potential customer, client or whatever. Basically make them at ease. You can disagree with somebody, but you can do it respectfully. So let's say in a situation I'm selling something, I want 20K, they want 10K and we're not budging, right? So as a salesperson, I would say, hey, you know, I totally understand that you guys want 10K. Obviously you guys are a small business. You're figuring it out and you're not really sure if like this is going to be a worthwhile investment i totally get what you're saying now with 10k respectfully like i feel it's a little too low for what we're looking for especially because when it comes to you know how much it costs to actually provide these services we would actually barely be making any money and it wouldn't even make business sense to be working with each other here so from there what i would do is i would try to reverse the situation or understand what are the levers that i need to pull to get this person to buy so let's say that they're just not confident if it's going to work and it's a lot of money for them to invest right so i'd be like hey it seems like this is going to 
going to be like a lot of your budget when it comes to like making this work. I totally understand that. And if it doesn't work, I understand that you also take a lot of business risk. Is there anything I can do to like de-risk it for you guys so that you guys feel more confident in this? And maybe we can work out the financials to reflect that as well. And then now you're opening up the conversation, right? And they might say, okay, well, what do you have in mind? And we could say something like, hey, how about this? Because you want to test it out before you really know if you it works. How about we do like payment plans where you pay, you know, X amount of percent upfront. And then when we do X, Y, Z, you pay the next payment. And then when we do the, you know, ABC, we do the next one. You pay us the next one, right? And so this way, if it doesn't work, then your risk is actually a lot lower because you only pay that first amount. And then if we do the good work on the first thing, probably do good work on the second thing, right? And then you're more confident in that. So, you know, we can keep the price as it is because as long as we do a good job, you're going to make more money in the end than you pay us. So how about we just break it into pieces based on certain benchmarks or milestones and then that way we de-risk it for you. We're still getting paid. We know that you're going to pay because you have some stake in the game. And then we just work from there. How's that sound? And they're going to probably say yes, right? And so it really depends on what is holding them back from moving forward or what is, you know, keeping them from not lowering their price. But there's always a way to do it. And you don't always have to lower your price to win a negotiation. Sometimes you just have to give up something for free to make the person feel more confident in purchasing your product and service. And that's pretty much it. With that said, those are going to be some of my best tips when it comes to negotiating. I hope it really helps you guys out in the field and I will see you guys in the next one.